consider the measures of complexity on any given incident. Is it size, location, number of resources, or is it the number of communication links on the incident? We have with us at any given time handheld radios, mobile radios, cell phones, sat phones, smartphones, tablets, and laptops. Each radio has up to 250 frequency combinations. Each phone, only you know how many contacts there, and internet with countless links. We count our fortunes to be in communication with so many people in so many ways, but if you can't manage the sheer volume of communication links, it's virtually no good to anyone. So, how do you manage a system this huge? Very carefully. So the issue is this. We have a complex system that we need to simplify in order for us to function correctly on the fire line. So if you start the incident with a good frequency plan, you are able to give people um, correct information, get them on frequencies, allow them to work, and allow them to communicate back to you, give you situational awareness, it makes you that much more effective. Uh, the most common radios that I deal with are the Bendix King, multi-channel, multi-group uh, radio, field programmable, 16 groups within our radios that have 16 channels. Um, we leave one group open for field programmable use. For instance, if we go to another district or we go on an assignment, that way we can get it uh, um, programmed to whatever our needs are. But the other groups, we have locked down into frequency plans based on the areas that we'll probably be working with within our district. So for instance, we have a north group and a south group that have 16 channels that are pre-identified and pre-programmed with all the necessary channels, our dispatch channels, our command channel, our tactical channels, air to ground, and any repeated sites. And uh, that way we know each radio that we're dealing with within our fire program is the same. Okay, here's the deal on frequencies. It's not necessarily a question of getting the proper frequencies plugged in, it's a question of the right frequency combinations, transmit and receive, plus tones. Repeated channels has to do with a frequency that is not line of sight. And what I mean by that is either you're dealing with distances or you're dealing with topography, whereas you don't have the ability to talk to whoever you're communicating line of sight. So the frequency has a different receive and transmit, and there's a tone that trips um, that frequency activation. On our district, we have several repeated sites that enable us to cover a large amount of ground. Again, a tone is more or less, I guess the best way to describe it is a key which unlocks the, the transmission and the uh, reception of the frequency. In order to trip the correct uh, repeated site, you would need the correct tone. Um, tones can be used multiple times it's really uh, a fact of whether or not you understand if you have the correct receive and transmit frequencies. You might think you have the correct tone in or you might have the correct number of frequencies or number of zeros in the transmit and you don't. And you might be receiving or you might be transmitting but you don't have the full package put together and so your message isn't getting out to the field. During briefings, whether you are the sender or the receiver, the plan for communications must be crystal clear before engagement. An example being if we had a crew from out of district come into our district and we're giving them a briefing on our uh, radios and also our um, communication channels, our groups, and our, and our radio plan. Um, one of the things that's most important is understanding geographically how our repeaters are set up and located. The reason it's important to be able to field program your radio, whether it be your handheld, your mobile, or again, if you're an aviation resource, is the fact that you may be changing locations. Frequencies can change and will change, and you may be asked to go to another frequency on the fly. Um, so you have to be proficient in that. 
um, oftentimes I will get resources sent to a fire to me in the heat of battle that don't have the correct information, don't have a radio that works properly, don't have equipment that operates within the system that I'm in, and the, the honest answer is their there are uh, their safety issue, and and they'll be set to the side. The difference between a tactical frequency and a command frequency is the intended use. A command frequency is for overall objectives. It allows you, as the incident commander, to speak to dispatch, to take care of things that tactically in nature um, aren't, aren't part of the fire. Now tactical frequencies are just that, they're for tactical use, they're for the divisions, they're for the single resource uh, boss, they're for the individuals that are fighting the fire on the line. Air to ground is just that, transmission from the air to the ground or from the ground to the air. Not on the tactical channel unless you have specifically assigned that aviation resource to that specific division and you know you have other needs for an air to ground. I mean there are examples of that but the, again you don't want to ball up the lines of communication by having unnecessary traffic on frequencies that are intended to be used for different purposes. The use of phones for tactical decisions is not acceptable. Phones, uh, in my opinion, are a necessary part of what we do. For instance, um, if you need to speak to your home unit, your duty officer, your line officer, or whomever um, is in charge of that piece of ground that you may be dealing with, tactical communication is, is important for everyone to hear. There might be important safety concerns that are relayed on that tactical channel. Um, so if you're using a phone or you're communicating that way, it's, it doesn't allow the rest of the, the personnel to understand what's going on. The incident command system refers to the number of resources that one person can effectively manage. It's fair to say that span of control guidelines also apply to the number of frequencies you are managing. I just arrived on a fire and I have been dispatched as an initial attack IC. Um, doesn't really matter the complexity. In my mind, uh, the rules are the same. I have a command channel and I build the organization. I utilize the incident command system. You know, based on my needs, I start giving tactical frequencies to the divisions or to the single resource bosses. I establish an air to ground off of my communications plan. When you're initially first arriving on scene, you're trying to get the correct information so you can go to work. What is typically available is a command channel, an air to ground, and two tactical channels. Oftentimes, as we know, uh, a fire may escalate rapidly. We may get out of our span of control based on our ability to keep up with the communications, keep up with the information, and um, you know, being able to provide people clear direction. Um, a fire may geographically get to another level. We might move into terrain where line of sight frequencies are no longer working, or we need to expand to other divisions. Um, you'll know that immediately. And the reason you'll know it is because you'll have trouble communicating, or you will feel overwhelmed, or you cannot keep the chaos down. And you'll feel that level of anxiety rise, and you'll, you'll recognize if, if you are um, understanding how it all should work and, and understand the function of a frequency plan and how it is tied in with ICS, um, if you see that happening, you should be making the necessary adjustment. The system for reporting problems encountered on wildfires, SafeNet, reports that the majority of submissions are related to communications, specifically those that dealt with radio, repeater, and frequency issues. It's not surprising when you examine the complexity of the system and the diversity of the users.
If you do find yourself in a position where either you've come into an incident and the communication plan isn't working or you don't understand or you started off on the wrong foot, there are things you can do. The key is acknowledging that you have an issue and if you are in a command role that you have the ability to do that and understanding it might be better just to stop operations for 5 to 10 to 15 minutes to get everybody on the same page and start over versus continuing down a path for the next four to five hours or into the next shift before you can get everything cleared up. Um, yeah, it might be difficult, but again, at least it gives you a fresh start. You really shouldn't be engaging from the get-go if you're not clear or don't have the right frequencies or can't work your radio or your radio doesn't work properly. You shouldn't be engaging. Uh, based on what I described, it's a question of LCES. To me, it's managing the incident within the guidelines of incident command system, utilizing your frequency plan. You know, you have the power, so to speak.